Digital technologies are key driver of digital transformation. So let's see how they developed over time. Well, first we have what we call here early ICT. These are ERP or MES systems, standing for Enterprise Resource Planning or Manufacturing Execution Systems. We have EDI, the Electronic Data Interchange between different companies. This first started in the 1960s and as early as 1988, the United Nations issued a standard on EDI. This is UN EDIFACT, standing for Electronic Data Interchange for Administration, Commerce and Transportation. Then we had the Web 1.0, the first version of the World Wide Web, and the e-commerce boom at the end of the last millennium. We call this early ICTs because from today's standpoint, it's a distant past when these ICT, these information and communication technologies shaped our economy and our society. Next, we have what we call here common technologies, social, mobile, analytics, cloud, oftentimes abbreviated with the acronym SMAC, S-M-A-C, for the first letters of these different technologies. In the first decade of this century, between 2000 and 2010, these technologies emerged. Social computing emerged in the midst of that decade, when in, especially when in 2004, Facebook was launched and many other social media platforms before that and after that. Mobile computing got a boost in 2007 with the introduction of the first iPhone. Data analytics emerged in that time and cloud computing, the term was first used by the Google CEO in 2006. By that time, these were the novel um, technologies at the forefront of innovation. Today, many companies already have a grip on how to handle these, how to use these in the established business models or in the new business models which emerge from these SMAC technologies. Still, you find some companies who try around and experience how to scale this up, how to leverage it for their business. But by and large, looking over the breadth of the economy, these technologies are very well established. Next, we have the emerging technologies. That's more at the forefront of innovation at the moment. Then we have artificial intelligence, the Internet of Things, variables, neurables, augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, different blockchains, 3D printing, 4D printing, and so on. This is more what currently industry is thinking about when they think about novel digital technologies and considering how to use them. And this is definitely not the end. You see this with the upward bending arrow. More technologies are to come. Some already um, play around with them, but they are not widely used in business yet. What's your perspective? Which digital technologies will be next? Given this history of digital technologies, starting at latest with the Second World War and moving on to today and to continue in the future, the question is, is digitalization something new or is it only the same as the introduction of information and communication technologies over decades and decades? Well, there are two distinct facts about digitalization which tell it apart from prior use of IT. For one, this is the speed of change. What you see here on the left hand side of the slide is the time by which 50 million users were reached by a new technology. When the radio was first introduced, it took 38 years until the first 50 million users were reached. For the TV, this were only 13 years, iPod 4 years, Internet 3 years, and so on and so on. We stopped at Instagram with 6 months. You could go even quicker if you go for Pokemon Go, Candy Crush Saga or anything like that. But we stopped updating it because this record is broken over and over again. Now the question emerges, is this a fair competition between radio and Instagram? I mean, for radio, you had to develop the hardware, the receivers, the senders, you had to build up the radio station, you had to build up the infrastructure, you had to get the receivers produced and delivered to the customers and so on. For Instagram, well, it's only an app and a website. So is this a fair comparison? Well, it's not quite a fair comparison, but that's specifically the point, especially with the internet, but as well with PCs uh, and smartphones. We have general purpose devices and general purpose technologies widely available. And this allows us to be way quicker because we don't need to do the hardware innovation. We don't need to do the 
innovation in the broadcasting networks, but can build on these general purpose technologies, PCs, tablets, smartphones, laptops, and the like, connected via the internet, and thereby can be way quicker with innovation. So the speed of innovation is one difference between current times of digitalization and former times of IT use in business. The other aspect is the level of connectedness. What you see here on the upper right hand side is the number of connected devices. It's estimated that by the year 2000, we had about 200 million devices worldwide connected to the internet. And it's estimated that in 2025, um, we'll have about 75 billion internet connected devices on the earth. That means about 10 internet connected devices per person. Some of you watching here probably have 10 internet connected devices. But if you think about the global average of the population, then that's definitely not the case yet. So there's still a lot of growth to come. And we call this obviously the Internet of Things. Because if we talk about this high number of internet connected devices, it's not about individual computing devices, individual smartphones and so on, but it's about the things around us getting connected to the internet, getting smart and thereby building the Internet of Things. And what you see on the lower right hand side is the estimated value added by the Internet of Things. An improved customer experience, reduced time to market, supply chain and logistics, reduced costs, increased employer productivity. You'll find many other estimates with other numbers and other breakdowns. I only know this chart here to make clear that the Internet of Things is a pervasive thing, that it affects many different parts of our businesses and our society. Now, where does this leave us? If we go with higher and higher speed of innovation and higher and higher level of connectivity, then the result will be something like what you see here very schematically, a cyber-physical human system. You have the human at the center, hopefully at the center. You have the physical products and things on the internet. You have data, algorithms, services, machines, all on the internet, all connected with each other. And that's a complex thing. The characteristics of these world are oftentimes abbreviated with the term VUCA, standing for volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. These are the system characteristics which make it very difficult to analyze and manage such systems. Mm -hmm.